So welcome to the basic July block of the month here at Close to Home in Southington. You can bring in your June finished block beginning this Saturday, July 15th at 10 o'clock to receive your July kit free. You have until July 31st to show your June block. If you want to look up any of the dates that things are due, blocks are due, videos are coming out, please check your instructions. It's on the last page um, of your instruction sheet. Our class, Hip to Be Square, quilt in August, still needs two students. So if you're interested, please come on in or you can sign up online for that. We have a wall of fabric back here in our classroom all three dollars and 99 cents per yard it's a one yard minimum and that is good until july 24th also our christmas in july sale is still going on until saturday july 15th it ends at four o'clock so hopefully you'll come in and take advantage of some of our great deals that we have going on so let's talk a little bit about the july basic block it has a little bit of piecing and a little bit of applique. It's called a Dresden plate. And we are doing very big wedges for the July block. If you look at my sample for July, it is really built into four pieces. We have three in this corner, three, three, and three. Being a 90 degree corner, these wedges are all 30 degrees. So it makes it very simple to use the Creative Grid Starburst 30 degree ruler to cut our wedges. And I'll show you how to do that. Also, I'm gonna show you a very simple way to trace your circle and turn it right side out so you have a nice uh, finished edge on the side of your circle as well. And we're going to do a little bit of applique to put our um, Dresden plate onto our background fabric. So there's a lot to kind of go over, but the block is pretty simple. So let's look at our directions for cutting. We have the orange, yellow, and the multi-blue. All those blades are gonna be cut at a four and a half inch rectangle. You can just leave it at 10 and a half. Just leave what, um, what is in your kit. The length is not really as important as we want a nice four and a half inch strip. And I did use Mary Ellen's Best Press on my kit fabric. The other two fabrics in your kit are a small piece of red and the large white background. Do not cut these. I will show you what to do with those when we're ready. So I've gone ahead and I've already best pressed um, and starched my fabric. So I'm going to show you first off how to um, cut the blade shapes and make the blades. So we're going to layer all these on top of each other. Just so going to kind of line up one corner, one end. I'm going to take my 12 and a half inch ruler. And I'm just going to cut a nice straight edge and get a four and a half. Oh, I've already cut this. Oh, good thing I stopped. <laughs> so I've already got a nice four and a half inch rectangle. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut the blades. Now, this is the Starburst ruler. And um, you can see you can make uh, wedges anywhere up to pretty much nine inches long. Our wedges are only gonna be four and a half because that's how wide we're cutting our fabric. However, we wanna use the lines, the four and a half inch lines between the one and the five and a half, this white line that goes along, here's five and a half that goes along right here. So to keep me on track, then I know to put the top of my strip at the one and the bottom of my strip at the five and a half line, I'm gonna use glow line tape. I'm just gonna take a little piece of tape. Uh, let's get this going here. And I'm gonna just mark my uh, where those lines are. So right here, I'm just marking right down at the one. And it's a nice visual for me to uh, see as I'm using my using my ruler. Okay. And I'm gonna go up, here's my one, 
two, three, four, five and a half. So I'm going to put my tape going right across this white line. And again, that's another visual just for me so I can find them very quickly. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to turn our strips. We're going to cut our first wedge. It's just that. I'm going to go over this corner. Sorry. And I'm going to put the one line at the top of my strip. It doesn't matter. I could do it either way. And the five and a half right where I've marked it with my tape along the bottom line. And I'm just going to cut both sides of this wedge to start. Okay. Hopefully I can cut a little bit. Normally you would turn this around and do it. Just be very careful with it. So basically I've just cut these three wedges. All we do is turn our ruler 180 degrees. Again, I'm going to line it up with that piece of tape, my five and a half and my one, and cut a second group. Again, I need four because we have four corners in our Dresden. Hold on to that. I, use, I just changed my blade. It makes it so easy to go through three layers of fabric. I always recommend changing your blade. And then we have a little excess over here. So what we're going to do is we're going to, I'm going to show you how to make the wedges and then join them all together. So the first thing we want to do is we want right sides together on the widest section of our Dresden. And we're just going to match those corners. Okay, once we match the corner, we're going to sew across at a quarter of an inch. So we're going to just chain piece the orange, either four oranges, four yellows, whatever. You have to do them all, and you have 12 of them. So we're going to sew from the raw edge to the fold. All right, so let me go ahead and do that. I'm going to put on my quarter inch foot, and I like my stitch length to be about a two. Um, that really helps hold the point together. All right, so here we go. We're just going to go ahead. I'm going to sew three of these together in the chain. I got my right sides, the widest part of my triangle. I'm going to fold together right sides together and feed it in from the raw edge to the fold. And one more. Okay, raw edge to the fold. Let's get it right on top of each other. Wow. Come on. Here we go. So we're going to take all 12 of these out. I only did three, but we're going to take all 12 of these out. We're going to cut them apart. If you have that cool little gadget that cuts them, you, you can use that. All right. The next step after we have all these 12 done is we need to remove some of the fabric that's going to be up in the point of our wedge. So I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to literally cut very, very close to the line, kind of at an upward curve. So here we go, just like that. All right, I'm going to do it again. Take the orange, I start at the fold and just kind of trim away some of that fabric. Don't cut the thread, that would be bad. All right, now that I have all of my wedges trimmed, I'm going to turn them right side out and poke that point either with my um, seam creaser, point turner, or my purple thing. Either one is going to work really, really well. Um, this one just feels a little bit better, so I'm just going to kind of poke that. Don't go too hard. Um, you might come right through the other side. And just gently get that a nice point because that is going to be make it really easy to um, do your applique stitch around. All right, so here I'm just going to po poke that right up. So you see inside that I have um, 
I have trimmed away everything here that's at the point. I don't know if you can see that. And it doesn't really matter which way the seam allowance goes inside. Um, but as I was, um, you know, folding this in half, I kind of gave it a little pinch. You can see the um, the seam, the, um, um, what do you call that? The crease that I put in it. So I'm just going to crease it again. And you see the crease? This seam is going to sit right on that crease. Not to the left of it, not to the right of it, but right on it. And we're going to press it, all our wedges, just like that. So let's go over to the iron and I'll show you again how to do that. All right. So I have my crease going down my wedge. I'm just going to fold the seam allowance to one side. I'm going to match that seam with that crease and just give it a little press. Okay, and just to hold it. And there's my wedge. We need 12 of these. So here I'm going to crease the yellow just with my finger, put a little crease in it, match my seam to that crease, and give it a little bit of a, a little hold on the press. Okay, one more time, fold it, give it a little finger crease, knock your seam over to one side and match up that seam to that crease. All right, so go ahead and do 12 of those. And now we're gonna sew our wedges together in a circle. So let's go ahead, go back to the sewing machine and I'll show you how to sew these together. We're gonna do them in groups of three. And I think how I, I did it in my instructions, I did an orange, and then I did a blue, and then I did a yellow. Um, so it doesn't matter where you start, but we're gonna do them in groups of three, and then we're gonna do halves, and then we're gonna put the whole circle together. So when we're putting the wedges together, we're gonna to put right sides together, and I need to sew a quarter of an inch down this line. The only thing I want to emphasize is when I start to sew this wedge, I actually want to start down about a quarter of an inch and reverse my stitch first until my needle falls over this fold. And then I'm going to sew my full quarter of an inch all the way down. And the reason we do that is, is pretty, is like twofold. One, this really helps stabilize when we open up our wedges, we don't have um, just the threads pulling it apart. There's really a, a securing lock stitch on the end of that. And two, our thread is now uh, starting here so we won't have threads uh, coming out the middle of our wedges when we sew them together they'll pretty much be buried so let's go ahead and do that first thing we're going to reverse and then we're going to go forward So I'm gonna start in a little bit, maybe two, three stitches. It doesn't have to be a lot. I hold the reverse button, start stitching back, and as soon as my needle goes off the fold, I can stop. You'll know when, if your machine takes an extra stitch or it stops automatically, but as soon as the needle goes off, stop, and then come forward. So let's add the other wedge and you see now this is really nicely secured up at the top and there's no threads sticking out the top. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is now that we have all our yellow blues together, we're going to put the blue right side together with the orange wedge. We're going to line that up. And again, start about a quarter of an inch or three or three stitches or so in reverse and then forward. Hold the reverse. Go ahead, take a couple stitches back. Okay, needle came off the edge and now I can go straight ahead. Make sure these two are right on top of each other, raw edges together lined up. 
so we have all of these put together in a three. I've done some here. I've taken these two and I've made a half. So go ahead and make two halves. Same way we were doing it before. We're just putting them together, reversing, and then coming forward. Hold my reverse, take a couple stitches, join the wedges together, and come straight down a quarter of an inch. Now I have two halves. It's just like what I was doing before, um, only I'm, I'm completing the circle. So the orange goes on the yellow. And I'm just gonna complete my entire circle. So again, reverse, forward. We'll do two more. Hold the reverse, take a couple stitches back. start sewing from the point of each wedge down into the center circle. Okay, so everything's done except for these two. Just going to match those up. Do the same thing. Last one. Hold the reverse and a couple stitches back and forward. Get those edges right evened up against each other. All right. So now we're going to take it to the ironing board. And we're going to press it all in one direction. Okay? But each time we just have to kind of give it just a little bit of a tug. You don't want to just put your iron on it. You kind of have to put your iron on it, open it, press it, press it, and we're going to kind of press it in a, a circular motion. So come on over to the ironing board and I'll show you that. Alright, so we're going to start here. I'm going to put my iron on, put some, put some weight down on it, and kind of go around, just kind of tugging ever so gentle. I can turn it and keep going. So iron down, again, a little bit of a tug. You don't have to go crazy. I just want to open those seams up a little bit. I don't want to stretch it. Um, and just give it a little bit of hold and we're gonna do the rest of it. Okay, just kind of give it a little bit of a, a turn motion. Okay, when you're happy with that, you can flip it over and give it a real good press. All right, so we're almost there. We have to make our red circle for the center. So to do that, I've given you a template on your directions. It's uh, about a two and a half inch circle. And what we're going to do, we need to use um, Pelon Tear Easy. It's a stabilizer that just pulls away. We use it um, behind our fabrics when we applique our pieces. And that's what we're going to do next. We're going to use this. So I'm going to take a small square of this. I'll cut away, I'll cut away my, six, uh, my 12 inch block to use behind my Dresden. And then I only need a little circle right in the corner. So I'm just going to put um, my circle right on my uh, tear easy. So you just draw it. You can use a pencil. I'm using a friction pen. Try to be a little steadier than I am. Okay. Because this is your, your sew line. Wow, that's a horrible. All right. Make your circle. <laughs> and then we're going to take our red fabric that's been stabilized and we're going to put our tear easy right against the right side of our fabric. And we're going to sew our circle and then we're going to cut it away. 
So once I have my tear easy circle, I put it to the right side of my red square. And we're just going to take a couple little stitches forward, backwards, just to secure it. And then we're just going to sew in our circle. Again, needle down, keep picking up your presser foot because we are going in a circle. If you want to pin it, certainly you can pin it. But I'm just following that line. stitches we'll get around this corner all right and then we'll forward back forward a little just to lock it all right next thing we're going to do is we're going to cut away the stabilizer from around our circle about um, about an eighth of an inch or so you can use pinking shears just don't get too close to the sewn line doesn't have to be perfect. Nobody, nobody's going to see it. All right. So I have this circle. I've sewn on the line. I've trimmed it an eighth of a way. Next thing you want to do is kind of cut into the um, stabilizer, and we're going to turn our circle inside out, right side out. Just give it a little finger press. Don't worry too much about the stabilizer. It'll come with you. And this is again where the seam creaser comes in really handy. So I use my nails just to kind of get the basic shape of the circle, kind of push the edges out, but then I'll come around again with my point turner seam creaser and give it a nice, um, nice uh, smooth edge around it. All right, pretty, pretty good. And then we're gonna go over and give it a nice press. And I'm going to come over and pin it here. So I'm just going to press it. Just put a little heat on it. Flatten it up a little bit. And I'm going to put it right in the center here. So if I look, I mean, it's pretty centered all the way around. I could go ahead and pin that on. Okay. The next thing we want to do is find the center of our background fabric. So we're going to take a piece of our, uh, it's about 14 inches square. It's not exactly square, but it doesn't really have to be. And we're going to just fold it in half. It's, it's extra large, uh, so we will be trimming this away. And we're going to give that a little press, and then we're going to fold it again on the quarter and give that a little press. So I have my crease marks. Okay. So we're gonna open this up, right side up. Sorry, now that I have my, my crease lines going through, I can take my Dresden and I can line up where I need it to be. So this one's gonna be on that crease line. This is gonna come on that one here here just keep turning until you get it where you want it just to tug on it a little bit and that's pretty centered so this seam is coming right out to this crease line i'll go ahead and pin that okay and then we have this one on this side just a couple pins just to kind of hold it in place and now we need to applique, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our other piece. This was a third yard of Tear Easy that I started with, and this is a 505 Temporary Adhesive. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna spray a little bit of adhesive onto our tear away, and we're just gonna place our Dresden right inside that, right on it, okay, so that it sticks nicey nice. All right, so now the fun part comes, and that's called applique. And I'm going to be using a white thread to go around my applique shape and a red thread to go around my circle. So I have that done here. <laughs> so I've gone around the, the perimeter of the 
Dresden, but I haven't done the circle. I want to show you a little bit how to go around the circle. So I'm going to go ahead and change out my thread to the red because I'm not real comfortable with it um, and I want it to kind of blend in a little bit. So I'm just going to use the same color. You can use a cotton thread, you can use a, a polyester, um, like a poly sheen or a Mettler um, cotton is fine. So that was my quarter inch foot and this is what's called an open toe foot. So the big difference um, is I'm able to do a decorative stitch and I can still see uh, exactly where I'm going with my stitching. So I'm going to load on my open toe. It's always good to have an open toe. If you're Janome, it's called a satin stitch foot. Okay. And then we're going to pick a blanket stitch. And the blanket stitch looks, um, well, it's hard to see. It looks like this. It goes, it goes down the side. I'll be cutting this off so it's not to worry. It goes down, over, back, down, over, back, down, over, back, down. Just like that. Uh, sometimes they call them a ladder stitch, or I call it a blanket stitch. But this line of stitching, it goes right between the two pieces of fabric on the background fabric, right in that groove. And these little fingers that are coming off the blanket stitch go right in to the applique piece. In this case, it's the wedges of our Dresden plate. So let's try it with our red. I'm going to pick our stitch on the Bernina 475. It's stitch 1309. And I like a little um, a stitch length of about a 2.0 and a width of about a 1.6. I don't want to I don't want to really see it. I just want to hold it in place. There's other stitches that have much longer stitch widths um, where the fingers go very far into it um, but I just like a little tiny stitch all right and we'll go ahead and not cut our fat sorry wrong button take a couple locking stitches and as you see as I slowly go around the you know, the, um, the needle lands right on the outside of my fabric, right into the orange. I'll try to go really slow. Orange over to red, back to orange. Orange over to red, back to orange. And I have to keep turning my fabric so that the when it comes forward, it's going to meet right on the edge of that fabric. So I'll do it again. Over, forward, left, right. Forward, left, right, forward, left, right. It's a really good idea to make sure you have needled down so that if you do need to pivot, you're always pivoting on the outside of your circle. I want it to come forward. I mean, you could drive it in a circle, but then the fingers get a little skewed as far as slanting. Okay, so here we go. So I'm going to speed this up a little. <laughs> circle where that needle is always dropping just on the outside of the circle, then you, you're golden. All right, I'm back to where I started. I'm just going to hit my little knot button to secure it and give it a couple locking stitches. All right, the last thing you need to do, well actually there's two more things you need to do. Let's go trim this. Come on over. So the last thing we're going to do, 
um, is we want to pull away all of our uh, tear away. So we're just going to kind of